welcome to the Whiskey Vault. <laughs> Wait, hold on. That's the moment you know we've already had a few. No, we've <laughs> barely well, started drinking. No, 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 no. We're the third episode in. Yeah. I promise you. Episode number one, zero whiskey. You don't come out with finger guns. No, I was pretty close. Uh, but Alex, uh, I was going to talk about how Alex uh, did the perfect count off. Daniel's feeling good. But then the camera... Um, then the camera turned off in the middle yeah. of my right. handsiness. Old Forester. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All single, right. Single, single barrel, barrel from Alaska from yeah. Titan, Mike Callahan. Daniel, the distance. Yes. Did you hear that? Just say yes. It's always. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> So, uh, but barrel strength old Forester, yeah. which is kind of fun. Yeah, so of course we're going to have to compare. To the classic old Forester. Yeah. Now, the only problem is the classic old Forester is lower proof. It's not a total, but I love, here's what I love mm -hmm. about old Forester's barrel program. Look at this. Warehouse six, yep. floor seven. Very specific. Very specific. I wonder where right? the, uh, the sweet spot is. In their warehouse? Yeah. Well, it, what's funny is they own, you know, this is Brown Foreman, right? right? This is one of the bigger players in all of bourbon. Um, and they they have sweet spots that they use for other brands. Oh. So, like, and their experimental ones are, like, that Woodford is doing a lot of, like, that's coming out of there. And, yeah. like, the honey barrels go for these, which is, here's the coolest thing about how they use honey barrels for other brands. Mm -hmm. That's actually really true to really old bourbon history. So, mm. for example, mm -hmm. George Garvin Brown, who founded Old Forester, wasn't making whiskey at first. Mm. He was the first to release whiskey in bottles yeah. exclusively. Mm -hmm. Plenty of people were doing bottles, but he did it exclusively. And he also uh, added the tag to the top, yeah, you yeah. know, like, and he was selling almost only to doctors, medicine. Oh, so you get a prescription. And, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> um, and then... It became more common once industrial age picked up and made it really easy to make glassware. It'll cure but, what ails you. Um, he used to source barrels from a bunch of distilleries and yeah. blend them to create old his brand, Old Forester. Yeah. And then he eventually bought a distillery and then they started making whiskey. Mm -hmm. But this sort of finding honey barrels yeah, it's and creating a brand the, line. The model is that is so prevalent these days yeah. where you're sourcing and doing your own thing. I mean, that's kind it's of like return to always the been done in Berlin. Yeah. yeah, even in Scotland. That's... Yeah. That's where it comes from, yeah. right? It's, it's, I mean, hmm. it's not new. No, it's not. There's no new strategy. Uh, so one thing that I always remember about, uh, remember about Old Forester, and I'm assuming it's still going to be here, it is a little bit more wood forward. Yep, and rich. Yeah. And dense. There it is. I got to tell you, that's a really nice freaking it's, nose. Smells amazing. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's uh, somehow both dense and a little and vibrant, but soft around the edges at the same time. A raspberry cream, mm -hmm. man. Just the biggest, like this, this wood wrapper around a raspberry cream. You know what it is? It's fudge. Because well, I'm trying to think of what has that level of density so and drama. The density but of But it's fudge. also soft. You're saying the density of fudge, yeah. but not the flavor of fudge. No, no, but okay. just it's soft around the edges yeah, yeah. like fudge is, but it's yeah. dense and thick yeah, and yeah, yeah, viscous. Yeah. That's it smells good. That's another gear. Let's see if it holds up. Oh yeah. Oh, it feels thick too. Now it's cherry cream and raspberries. The texture of that. Oh, I just that is good. That's <laughs> <Stupid>. okay. <laughs> Should we compare it to the classic, a, a classic old Forester, or something that's closer in proof? Yeah, you know what? You got to do them all, man. No. For this, for the science. No, there's a. And the accuracy. For I want to do the easiest. Oh, I can't anyway. Oh. The uh, finish just keeps going. We we poured it all out for whiskey level two. The finish um, is going. It's 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 cherry is the the final note that just rides off into the sunset. Yeah. Oh, this it's really nice. is going to be the closest we'll get to it, but that's really easy for everybody to get, which is their hundred proof signature release. Yeah. And, well, let me pour it first. Oh, you're just holding it. Yeah, so they can see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we can pour. Ah! 
Mm. So, wow. this is a blend of barrels, yeah, right? Yeah. Not a single barrel. You know what? We have a pretty we have a pretty good life. Yeah. We, 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 we're doing we're doing some nice whiskey. We got a batch, and then immediately after this. We're gonna go shoot the episode, and Brianna has yeah. been right now. She's making us cocktails. Okay. Hmm. No, no, no. It's it's the hot cocktails. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's not gross. Weird. Hot like hot TikTok. sexy, or like yep. cocktails, or like hot for the, like for the cold, beverage for the cold winter season. Oh. Yeah, so we're gonna go have some cocktails made over there. Okay. This is pretty good. Yeah, yeah. This is pretty good. I'm just saying. All right. All right. Yeah, not near as good nose. It's not. Softer and more... The uh, raspberry's gone. Yeah. The cherry is gone. The cream is gone. And it's a little more musty, like like wooden uh, yeah. cellar kind of musty. Definitely more of a wood impact and a little bit a little bit more of a thin honey. Then you go back in the nose and to the original one, mm -hmm. single barrel. Oh, Come the on. density of that is like... You know what? It's like honey dripping down the inside. I'll tell you what it is. Mm. This... Noses and tastes like it was finished really well in some mm -hmm. type of interesting like wine barrel or something. That's so good. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna take a sip of the hundred proof signature. I just did. Oh, it's actually closer than I thought it would be from the nose. But the fruitiness is not. But there. there's no fruitiness. No. It's just honey and cream and sugars and, uh, and oak and tannins and, and wheat bread. Little wheat. Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna say a little grain. Yeah. And I could totally see it being wheat bread. Mm. This has that raspberry, the cream, the cherry. Yeah. That's. Yeah. I'm gonna live with that. And they one. didn't finish this in anything. Mm -mm. That's beautiful. Mm -mm. Well, I just want to keep going back and put my nose in. I know. I know. It's just so. You know what the word is? Voluptuous. It's a mm. voluptuous bourbon. I can see that. Damn. It's like being bitten by a lion with velvet jaws. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. I'm going to go once more and do single barrel. Do it. Mm-hmm. It just feels more thicker. Like it. it I'm going to risky this a little yeah, bit. I'm going to add some water. I understand. Same distillery. If you had told me this was pot still and this was column, I would believe you. Mm -hmm. Like the... Oh, know. yeah. Actually, yeah. I can see what you That's mean by that. That's the difference in these. Mm -hmm. Like, this isn't bad. There's beautiful things coming out of column stills, but this is the character, the type of difference that I expect in a pot still whiskey. All right, I'm going back to the 100 proof. When I added water, mm -hmm. it got closer to the 100 proof, which, I mean, ironically, it got closer to 100 proof, but it also got closer <laughs> to the nose of the 100 proof. Did it lose fruit? A little bit. It lost a step in the nose. Yeah, Old Forester is good, man. It didn't lose anything in the palate, though. I'm going to say this. Old Forester can be good. Okay, I haven't had a bad one, but right. I've had unimpressive ones. Yes. But yeah. then I've also had more, like, Stand up and mm -hmm. pay notice old Forrester releases. Do you think this may be like what we often see in MGP? Competent competent at the lower proof, mm -hmm. but it really shines once you just let it live near cast. I think so. Yeah, this is what it is. And that's not all whiskeys. It's not like, no, it's you know. it's really not. It's not like you can just say, make all whiskey better by only releasing it cast. No, it does some, not work. Some do not You need to be at cask at all. Yeah. Some are much nicer at the lower proof. <laughs> but old Forrester... Based on this, uh, and pretty much any MGP that gets released at low proof, proof versus higher proof. You want a little nerd trivia, whiskey trivia? George Garvin Brown's brother. His name was John Thompson Street Brown. Oh, my neighbors named their kid Kale, and my wife and all my my wife and I no. see. You know, they didn't name him Kale. My wife <laughs> were horrible people. It's like, uh, oh, did you see, uh, I'm not going to say their name, such and such, and they were out walking around with cabbage. <laughs> Ugh. Kale, really? They named him Kale. K-A-L-E? Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? Well, I'll tell you exactly why. There was, like, that is either Kale or Caden. And then they had, <laughs> I have funny neighbors. There was this heavy metal font generator, mm. right? And they okay. said Kale looked better in this heavy metal font no! than Caden. <laughs> Wow. So yeah, but lettuce, right? Like, yeah, <laughs> you just named him after lettuce. And not even the good lettuce. Oh like, God, I hope they'll watch this. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh. They, okay, but that they name. They can make my life very uncomfortable. They know where I live. It's, yeah. No, they don't want John it. Thompson Street Brown. Yeah. Now, do you recognize those initials? Let's see if I can JTSB? Find. JTS Brown. You heard of that? We've reviewed it. It's a cheap budget bourbon now. JTS Brown. You can buy it in... I got it's, it's like bottom shelf bourbon. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's their... His, the brother of the founder. Bottom shelf... Daniel, I live in Old Forest or Single Barrel Cast. I don't even understand what you mean what by is this bottom shelf. What is bottom shelf you speak of? Oh, you mean footstool whiskey? <laughs> Peasant whiskey? <laughs> <God>. <laughs> if I have to bend at the waist in order to pick something up, you know, I have nice. people for that. <laughs> you notice how high my pinky was when I said that? Yes. <laughs> I don't reach any further than this area. So if this is any <laughs> indicator of their Single Barrel program, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Old force or single barrel. Damn. I'm a fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, did the brown jug whatever people? Jug, brown jug. They yeah. picked it. Right. They picked it. Yeah. Damn, y'all. Yeah. Good right. job. Good picking. All right. Let's see. We got things. Capsaicin 1360. I just like watching funny nice dudes getting hammered on YouTube and saying words like caramel and shavings and apple. <laughs> then you're in the right spot, man. Yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he called us nice. Uh... <laughs> he obviously has not heard all of my rants. Yes. Adventures of Ranty Dan with his flat cap. And could you, no, you can't handlebar that. No. You know what, dude, I, well, I have to grow. I keep trimming it back. I, I can no. if I let it grow. This is what you do. Yeah. You go full curmudgeon. Okay. You don't handlebar the mustache. You handlebar the beard. <laughs> yeah, you just the beard. pierce it in the middle. Right and in there. Just wax handlebar. it up like this. Dude, that is way better. That is the most. The but then I never smile. <laughs> I never smile. I'm beard. just, I'm just yeah. angry. And then every once in a while, someone's like, "Did you handlebar your beard?" And you're like, "What? A handlebar beard? What are you talking oh, yeah. about? It's just no, long I enough. didn't. It's just long enough to do that. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, <laughs> I almost got it to stay. No, no, you're you, like, you need the wax. Yeah, you the really wax, do. Really. Yeah. Here you go. Here you go. Ready? That makes that makes Ranty Dan. <laughs> You know what that looks like? It looks like... like it looks like I stuck my finger in a socket. It looks like first year episodes. <laughs> first year episodes where... So whenever you're growing a beard out, the, yeah. you're, you're supposed to, like, don't mess with it. Don't screw with it. You're going to want to, like, trim it up, but you'd never get length if you're constantly yeah. trimming it up. So the first year... Then you always look like a slob. Like, yeah. <laughs> in every direction. Yeah, you look like you should be running a fan boat in the bayou. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right there's, right there's what we call it. That, there, there's that eating gator. That there's an eating gator. Uh, all right. <laughs> oh, okay. big enough to eat. I, to, I had gator recently. Was good. Anyways, distraction. User, <laughs> J look, man. This is like a, it's like a uh, generated password. User dash jg three hg three rl three q. You guys are looking at Seagram Seven from a whiskey connoisseur's perspective, yeah. which makes perfect sense. But from a bartender's perspective, it's worth keeping a bottle around as the seven and seven. That is true. Yeah, I will go back and is say this, I went back it, and watched it. It was once a staple, and it's a popular yeah. drink amongst older folks. Yeah, so I went back Good and point. watched it, and he's right. We did. Good point. We didn't approach Seagram's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The as with as fairness of what it was for as we did with like Crown Royal. Yeah, we try to do that, but yeah. sometimes we'll, you know. This is a very human thing. Yeah, you just yeah. kind of live in your own world and your own perspective. And, and I went own... and looked at the lineup of before and after. I think friend. that's why. Okay. Because before and after were like real legitimate, serious whiskeys. Yeah. And I think we were in the wrong headspace for that. But that that is a, a rule of thumb you should always do is mm -hmm. always like we did with that one earlier. Always approach the whiskey in the context in which it's attempting to be promoted or sold. Yeah. Oh man, I just that's good. This is amazing whiskey. It's, just, it's really good. This, this could go toe to toe with much more expensive bottles. Quite yes, frankly, absolutely. I don't know how much this costs, but it's eight hundred billion dollars. Quidditch. Quidditch? <laughs> that's a that's, that's the, the Harry Potter game where you yeah, chase I was trying the to ball. think of a weird do, uh, like non-dollar <laughs> name of a monetary device. So if you had to convert a Quidditch to, to a US, dollar U.S. dollars, so what's the conversion? oh a Quidditch? One Quidditch equals eighteen U.S. dollars. That's fair. Is magic. Yeah, that's fair. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. <laughs> if you fight, you fight for. A you steal me, you steal your liver. Side. If you drink, may you drink with us.